What's up people of the internet? I'm the big boat here with yet another video. In this video we're gonna be taking a look at Grand Theft Auto 5 on a super low end PC. Yeah, as if I haven't done enough GTA 5 videos already. While I was making the Christmas special with the top 10 best games for a potato PC, from the little boat that I made where you decided the Christmas video, I've determined that apparently people still want GTA 5 on low end PC content. So today I'm gonna show you a 10 minute gameplay of GTA 5 on my low end laptop along with how I optimized the game. All the tricking that you will see in this video is going to be as simple as possible and it will require the installation of one or two programs depending on your CPU and no mods whatsoever. So you will still be able to play GTA Online technically, not that I recommend you to do so. To start with, let's take a look at my PC specs. It's a Lenovo IdeaPad 115 IBY laptop with the Intel Celeron Edge Weight 40, which is a CPU based on the silver mode architecture and part of the Patreon family of power efficient processors. It has two cores and two threads and it has a frequency of up to 2.58 GHz. The Celeron Edge Weight 40 has the Intel HD Graphics Beige Rail as the integrated graphics, which have 4 unified shaders and a frequency of up to 792 MHz in the Edge Weight 40's case. It's also based on the Intel HD 4000 architecture while using the latest driver suite available. You also have 4 GB of RAM in single channel mode, as well as a 500 GB hard drive for the operating system and also in which the game is installed. As for operating system, we're using Windows X Lite Resto Revival version 2. You can find the full description of the specs in the video description down below. So yeah, it's really, really bad as you can tell, but would you believe me if I told you that I managed to finish the entire game on this laptop? Yeah. I actually finished GTA 5 on this Celeron back in August of 2023 and I'm gonna show you how to optimize the game, so let's go! When I first downloaded GTA 5 on this old laptop, it refused to even launch. It would just show a black screen for a while and then simply close. To fix this, I had to go to the game's config file, which is located in Documents, Rockstar Games, GTA 5. Right click the settings.xml file and open it with notepad. This is how the config file looks like. I had to scroll down until I found the DX version value and changed it from 2 to 0. This changes the game's DirectX from 11 to 10 by the way. Quite weird that GTA 5 doesn't work in DirectX 11 on my Intel HD page since they do actually support DX11. Anyway, now the game actually works, but how does it run? Well, I'm gonna be using the lowest settings that GTA 5 allows you to use by default, which are optimistically called normal settings, you can take a look right now, it's as low as it can go and I'm using the 800 by 600 resolution, no frame scaling mode. And well, it's amazing guys, 70, 80 FPS, yeah, that's the PC Master Race we're talking about. Oh, sorry, I meant 780 FPS, not 7080. It's not amazing. Not at all. This is terrible. The game is showing at single digit FPS most of the time. It feels choppy, it feels slow, it feels uncomfortable. You get it. And if that isn't enough, there is that issue where textures disappear when trying to drive fast. Probably because the Celeron Edge Weight 40 is really having a hard time trying to keep up. And if that hasn't discouraged you from playing like this, there is the memory leak issue. In other words, as you're cruising around the city with your pretty car, the SOP file goes higher and higher and the stuttering gets worse and worse. So yeah, I think we need to do something. The first thing that we're going to fix now is actually the terrible loading times, because for some reason GTA 5 takes like 20 minutes to load. 
To reduce the loading times, all you need to do is go back to the settings and set the VSync to half. Now the game should take only 2 minutes to load, not 20. The second thing that we're going to fix, or at least reduce to a bare minimum, is that memory leak problem. The first step is actually once again in the game settings. Set the texture quality from normal to high. It sounds ridiculous I know, but I've tested both settings extensively and I've noticed the swap file actually being lower over time with high textures the usage compared to with normal ones. And hey, it's high textures, which means better graphics, so it's a massive win for us super low end gamers. For the second step, we need a little program called Memory Reduct. I will provide a download link for it in the pinned comment. This program optimizes the RAM usage. This is how to set it up for GTA 5. In the settings tab, tick Load on System Startup, Start Minimize, skip User Account Control Prompt Warning and periodically check for updates. While from the other settings, which you can access from the File tab, go to Memory Cleaning and tick the Clean When Above option, set it to 90%. Before starting the game, click the Clean Memory button or the one from the hidden icon which appears when you right click. The third step is related to your Windows itself. If you use normal Windows without any optimizations and you don't have an SSD like me and only 4GB of RAM, you will see quite a lot of stuttering anyway, because the newer the Windows version and the more Microsoft bloatware you have, the more demanding is the swap file on the hard drive. However, if you use a custom ISO like I do, or at least if you debloat Windows, you should see less stuttering with your HDD. I can't do a full tutorial here on how to debloat Windows or install a custom ISO, because this video will become way too complicated otherwise. But there are many tutorials on how to debloat Windows with Chris Titus Text so to make Windows Utility 2, or how to install a custom Windows ISO. So if you're willing to take the risk, then follow them and you should get there. But I won't be responsible if you screw up something, okay? Keep in mind that after applying these fixes, the game might have insane stuttering in the beginning, but it should stutter less after playing for a while. And now it's time to lower the game settings below what is allowed by default. Let's return to the config file. Now, I think almost everyone knows that you can disable the shadows, right? But do you know that there are more things you can trick here? For example, if you set the reflection mid blur to false, you can disable the reflections of the cars and the water. Better yet, there are the LOD scale, pet LOD bias, vehicle LOD bias and max LOD scale values, which control the draw distance. You can actually set them to negative values, lowest allowed being minus 2. We are going to set the LOD scale to minus 0.7, make sure it's followed by 5 zeros, the pet LOD bias and vehicle LOD bias to minus 0.5, and down below the max LOD scale to minus 0.8. This is the lowest configuration that you should go for regardless of how terrible your PC is, because lowering these values to an even lower configuration, especially the vehicle LOD bias and max LOD scale, will make gameplay extremely difficult. Here's another configuration that I strongly recommend for slightly more powerful computers. In the in-game settings, the only thing we're going to change is the resolution. In the graphics option, we are going to increase the resolution to 1366 x 768 which is my laptop's native one, but we're not actually going to play in 1366 x 768 In the advanced options, we are going to set the frame scaling mode to 0.5. So we're actually going to play in half of 1366x768. This is done so that the rendering resolution is slow, while also keeping the interface nice looking. If you don't have the frame scaling mode, you can lower the resolution below 800x600 from the config file, but you have to play in window borderless mode, otherwise it doesn't properly work. Finally, we're gonna fix the texture disappearing issue. For that, we need a program called River Tuner Statistics Server, which comes with MSI Afterburner, but you can also download it standalone, link in the pinned comment. In the River Tuner program, which you can access from the blue monitor hidden icon after it's loaded, there is a big green add button. Click on it, then navigate to your GTA 5 directory and choose the GTA 5.exe file. 
In the left menu, make sure that EXE is chosen, and on the right, there is a frame rate limit option, as if the VSync to graph is not enough. You will have to explain what with this if your specs are different than mine, and also depending on what settings you are using. Now, can you guess to how much do I have to lock the FPS with all the tricking with it? The answer? 12! Yeah, not even 15! That's how slow the Intel Celeron N2840 is. To be honest, it doesn't feel and look that bad. If you're an extreme low-end gamer, you're probably used to such low FPS. Stable 12 FPS is better than 3015 FPS. Here are some additional fixes to enhance your experience. In the audio settings, turn off auto scan for music. I do not recommend using custom radio music by the way, because I found out it actually reintroduces the texture disappearing issue. In the display settings, that's up to personal preference actually, but you can turn the subtitles off, because at below 15 FPS, during cutscenes, the subtitles are unable to keep up with what is going on, and it looks weird you know. Finally, you can set the priority to high, to ensure not a single texture disappears. Click on Ctrl plus Escape, then right click on your taskbar. Go to the task manager. In the task manager, go to details, then find gta5.exe. Right click on it and set the priority to high, never set it to real time. And you're done. Keep in mind that you will have to do it again after restarting the game and make sure to do it not while the game is loading, but after it has done loading. Finally, Let's see the 10 minute GTA 5 gameplay on the Intel Celeron N2840, Intel HD Graphics Betrayal, 4GB of RAM and no SSD that you came for.
things every day, pal. Make sure this is one of them. We'll see you at the river. Go. <laughs> Let's go. Come on. Stop at the end of the river, get the bikes to the truck. 